الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد dear viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته once again it's an honor to be amongst you discussing the holy verses of the Quran and the narrations of أهل البيت عليهم السلام if you have followed uh, our lecture we have got to the point discussing the surah surah al-hamd and we have reached the verse إِهْدِنَ الصُّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ There was one hadith that we left off and we were not able to cover it within the previous episode under the verse إِيَّاكَ نَعَبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ that we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Him alone we worship and Him alone we turn back to help and to get aid and assistance there was one hadith that we were not able to cover it from Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, which will give us a very, very good and important action plan that I thought it is very important and essential to our discussion to bring it to your attention. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi said, In Allah fi awn al abd ma dam al abd fi awn akhi. When we seek aid and when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for aid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a condition, if you want my assistance, if you want my aid, make sure you are in the aiding and in the process of assisting and giving hand to your uh, brother. In Allah, that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fi awn al-abd, He will aid His servant, He will give him a hand, He will be helping him, until العبد في عون أخيه. So the more we are at the service of our brothers and sisters, at the service of our community members, trying to help them, try to give them a hand, try to aid them and assist them as much as we can. The more we aid them, the more we help them, the more we will get help and aid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that becomes a very good action plan. When we want something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we need help, when we say every day, 10 times we say, اِهْدِنَا الصَّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينِ اِهْدِنَا الصَّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Oh Allah, guide us to the right path. Oh Allah, unto you we come back for help. And we need His aid and His assistance and help in every second of our lives. Well, let us keep in mind that the more we want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more that we have to do for other people. It's a very beautiful beautiful hadith, an amazing hadith, how it builds relationship between the community members. And any discussion that we have, any action plan that we have, it has to start from our homes first, within our own family. Wife helping husband, husband helping wife, brothers and sisters helping one another, parents helping the children, children helping the parents, relatives, community members, us helping one another. We have to bring this helping concept this helping personality into our lives of looking around to see who needs help who needs assistance who is seeking aid for us to seek for us to grant their grant their needs and help them and guide them do whatever it is in our hands to be there for them and the more for for example i'm going to make it very 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 tangible in that one hour that we are aiding someone we're giving hand to someone. In that one hour, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us, will grant our needs, will aid us, will resolve our issues, will help us in our difficulties and challenges. So the more we want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we have to do for our fellow community members, from our, for, for our relatives, friends, and so on and so forth. Beautiful hadith and a beautiful, beautiful action plan that we have to Allah, we turn back to you for aid and assistance and help well that requires an action we believe that by us helping other people we're getting aid and assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this was under the verse inshallah we will continue Allah guide us onto the right path one of the best aid that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do for us and can give us is to guide us to the right path. Right path in everything. Right path is mean to make the right decision. Picking the truth in every decision making that we are about to make. We are about to get married. 
well, what is the right thing to do? Who is the right person for me? I have received, as a girl, I have received a proposal. Different people. Who is the right person for me? Who is it doing? What are the criteria? What are the conditions that I should look in my future spouse? Well, that needs help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us the right path to Him. In our aqeedah, in our belief, well, there is sarat al-mustaqeem. In our ahkam and jurisprudence, sarat al-mustaqeem. In our moralities and characteristics and demeanors, akhlaq, sarat al-mustaqeem. We are in need of Allah's assistance and help in guiding us to the right and onto the straight path. Ihdina, it is a command, command verb. However, it is with request, humble and humiliating ourselves in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, we are seeking. Oh Allah, we are begging. Oh Allah, we are requesting. Oh Allah, we are in need of your aid in guiding us to the right path. So we are not commanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not ordering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, it's a request. Rather, it's begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day, every day, ten times, oh Allah, guide me to the right path. Here, there is a misconception that we have to clarify. And unfortunately, throughout my journey in different states and different communities, I see unfortunately some figures within the communities. And every community that I have been to, and some of them might be scholars of the community, they have this misconception that has been unfortunately uh, been spread within our communities and some of the books that we read we see it and some of the lectures that we see i was listening to a lecture from a scholar who was the religious leader and religious imam of a ex community he said that this is a hadith which was completely fabricated hadith and he attributed that hadith to amir al-mu'minin the commander of the faithful ali ibn abi talib salam. if he was fasting and if it was during the month of ramadan and during the day while he was fasting and he would attribute this narration which is completely fabricated and it, is, it, doesn't, it doesn't exist, there is no source for it. If he would have said this narration, his fasting would have been invalidated. So it is very, very important to please pay attention to me. Keep your mind, let me have your undivided attention because we're trying to clarify a very, very un unfortunately and important concept that has been taking over our communities. And that is... We hear that Sarat al-Mustaqeem, the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as they say, path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is as the amount of the people on earth. Basically, they are relativizing the truth. In other words, everybody has a portion of the truth. Muslim has a portion of the truth. Shia has a portion of the truth. Non-Shias have a portion of the truth. Jews have the portion of the truth. Christians have a portion of the truth. Buddhists, Hindus, agnostics, atheists, everybody has a portion of the truth. And they are on the right path portionally. Well, this is wrong. When we read this verse, Ihdina as the right path, and it is singular. It's not plural. It's not many. Sarat, it's one, one path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One direct path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are no any other path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is it? We'll come inshallah at the end of this episode or the next two episodes or three episodes. We will talk about it. What is that Sarat and Mustaqeem? We will talk about it. But right now we're discussing it. Are there many paths to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or is it one? According to the verses of the Holy Quran, Every time that Sarat has been mentioned, it is one. And when it's talking about Sabil, Subul, there are many other paths that they will not end up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are falsehood. There is one right, one true path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, what is that path? We will discuss it. But first, let us come to a conclusion that is one path. Chapter 6. So this is one verse. Ihdina as -sarat Al-Mustaqeem, guide me onto the right, the right path. One Sarat. Another verse, chapter 6, verse 153. This indeed is my straight path. So follow it. One path. Annahada one Sarati. One path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mustaqeem is the straight path to me. Follow it. 
and then continues again chapter 6 verse 153 this is the way that we should read the verses of verses of the Holy Quran when we read them we have to ponder oh I have listened to a lecture it was a scholar he was wearing a turban with all due respect to all of the scholars may Allah prolong their lives may Allah guide me and them and all of us to the right path may Allah enlighten our hearts with the light of the Quran but we can make mistakes we are not infallible we are fallible so I listened to a scholar He's discussing that there are many paths to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm reading chapter 6 verse 153 throughout with the, one of the action plans that we gave in the previous episode that we read 50 verses a day and we read the translation of those verses and then we take one verse and we ponder. So throughout our journey of reading the verse of the Holy Quran, I reach to this verse. So I'm reading, Well, Allah is talking and saying, this is indeed my straight path. There is one straight path to me. Follow it. And then he continues, And do not follow other ways, other paths, for they will separate you from his way. So there is one straight path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One straight, where Allah is ordering us, فَاتَّبِعُوهُ Follow, follow this one straight path from A to B. Inshallah, we will bring more example. And Allah says, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُلْ Well, there are many other ways. And Allah says, فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ That Allah says, and do not follow other ways, for they will separate you from His way. So there is one way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there are other ways exist but those other ways will not get you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَلِكُمْ وَصَّاكُمْ بِهِ This is what He enjoins upon you so that you may be God wary. Very important point. Very, very important for us to keep reminding ourselves, our community members. We have to learn the knowledge of Quran, Ahl Bayt and educate other people. When we hear this discussion as being spread within our communities, within our fellow citizens, we have to remind the world, people, one sarat, ihdina as sarat, the path. Wa anna hadha sarati mustaqim. And it is logical, it is rational. When two people, when they have a dispute, and to, they go to, to the courts in front of a judge. Either one or other one is right and the other one is false. They have a dispute, they go in front of a judge. This person says, this belongs to me. The other person will say, this belongs to me. So one of them is right, one of them is wrong. They can't be both right. They can't both claim that this phone, for example, is theirs. It's one and it's not the others. How can they both possess this? Somebody purchased this and the other one didn't and has a wrong claim. So that's one scenario. Or they both are wrong. Maybe the one stole it and he's saying it's mine and the other one also wants to claim that it's his. Can't be that they both are right. One is saying this and one is saying the other. It can't because they are contradicting one another. One say I am right and the other person says I am right which they both agree, uh, arguing against one another. For example, possessing something or many any other arguments. So it is logical. Sarat, it's very important to again keep reminding ourselves there is one path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we see within the holy verse of Quran also Allah has brought sabil or subul. To bring it closer to our mind, sarat is like a highway. It's like a highway that has many lanes. There is one path, straight path, but in it, there are many lanes. If you are driving s slower, you go on the right side. If you are driving faster, you go to the left side. But this highway, it's all toward one direction and not other way. When we see this, this path, as the path of the question comes, Shaykh, if there are, there is only one path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why do we see different divine religion, Christianity, Judaism, at least these other two in addition to Islam, then how comes that they preach different things and they all claim that they will end up to a God, but they are different? Very good question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we see and read the lives of the whole, all the prophets, starting from Prophet Adam ala Nabi, ala salam, all the way to our current prophet, they all had the same mission. 
and they all preach the same thing. The first and foremost, obey and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not associate any partner with Him. Be aware of the day of judgment. Do good to one another. This was the basic fundamental. So worshiping and obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that highway. One. Until the second year after Hijrah, fasting was not wajib. People accepting Islam before Hijrah for many, many years, they were not fasting because it was not wajib on them. The path is one, but Sharia differed. From time of Prophet Musa ala Nabina wa alayhi salam to time of Prophet Isa ala Nabina wa alayhi salam, some, were, some things became halal because of reasoning, something became haram because of re reasoning. But when Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi came, <coughs> we have, we believe that anything that he said is halal, it will stay halal until the day of judgment. Halal Muhammadin halal ila yawm al qiyamah. Wa haram Muhammadin haram ila yawm al qiyamah. It won't change, but the previous religions, previous previous uh, prophets, their faith and belief and aqeedah, it was all one thing, but sharia differed a little bit. So we don't see any major shift from one to other. They used to say, for example, follow and worship this God and the other God. No, no, they were all one path, but they were different. There are different lane. And there is more to this discussion, but I want you to be very careful. Number one, the first action plan, let us not forget. The more we need from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we have to do for other people. Okay. Aid them, help them. And also, there's only one sarat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's more to this discussion, inshallah. We will leave it for the next episode. We will conclude our lecture and our presentation by praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the most important dua of our life, and that is for Allah to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi Adilullah ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma kun li waliyika al-Hujjat ibn al-Hasan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih. Fi hadhi sa'ata wa fi kulli sa'a. Waliyan wa hafidha wa qa'idan wa nasira wa dalilan wa ayna. Hatta tuskina wa ardaka taw'a wa tumatta'ahu fiha tawila. Fi rahmatika ya arhamar rahameen.